girl Kyla Nicole here. I'm back. Um, I posted a video earlier this week giving y'all like kind of an update with school and everything and why I was missing for a few months. Um, so I'm back. I wanted to do some like nursing content today. Um, my previous class was pathophysiology. So that's what had me ducked off low key for the last eight weeks of my life so I wanted to do like a pathophysiology video and like how I passed it and I wanted to give y'all some tips because I'm sure everybody would love some you know who doesn't want a little some pointers here and there so yeah if you want to learn how to pass pathophysiology getting an A or a B like your girl um stay tuned so yeah, um, what I have here today is some content here for y'all, how to pass pathophysiology. Um, I got a few tips here. I like wrote them down so I can go through my video with y'all. Um, my first thing is, is get the book. <laughs> That's number one is get the book because this class, so, well, first of all, pathophysiology is the study of the disease like the abnormal the abnormality of like the body processes so that's number one you've taken anatomy and physiology and that's like the normal process of the body the physiology portion so now patho so what is happening when the body goes wrong so that's what i learned early in the semester is that i'm taking pathophysiology not physiology so i need to know what is wrong not that's what i remember like what is wrong what is going wrong with the body not remember like the normal processes of like how the body is supposed to be functioning so that is your number one tip when you're taking this class forget the physiology well not forget but forget the physiology portion study focus more on the abnormalities that's my number one tip for y'all. That's number one. So, yeah. What I did here was I had to read. Girl, first of all, or sir, my last time I took my A&P class, like, that was in 2017. It's 2020. Girl, you think I remember that? Like, I don't remember. I don't remember that. Like, I've taken so many classes after that. That was, like, one of my first classes when I went back to school, like, and like I said, like in a video prior, I went to school part-time. I was only taking like two classes at a time when I was working full-time. So, girl, I remember that. <laughs> like, <laughs> I remember that. So, my key thing is I needed to, I read. Like, I had to read. Like I said in my last video, I had to read these chapters. So, my first tip is to read your chapters like dead ass serious. You're going to have to read. So with my school, I chose to do ebooks. Usually, I always said that I need to have, uh-uh, I need in front of me, hardcover book in front of me so I can go through highlight. But with my busy life, I, I was like, let me get the ebooks because then I can have an app. So with my school, I did the ebooks and I have this app bookshelf that I used that. It's now on my iPad, but I had it on my phone. So I work at a doctor's office. So when it's sometimes like, it's really not slow right now, especially with Corona and everything, but like I'm busy with my work. And sometimes like, I'm like, oh, let me, I need a break. I need a second dealing with like all the billing and like all the front desk procedures and stuff like that, making sure everything's going off right. Okay, I need a break. So. I literally will pull my phone out, pull up whatever chapter that we're on, and I'm going to, like, skim. <laughs> like, I'm not going to lie. Like, I'm going to skim while I'm at work. So, I'm trying to pull it up here for you. It has to download. But, like, I literally will sit here and read through some of the chapters. Like, it's, some of it's getting in my brain. I may not be, like, fully paying attention to it, but, like, the parts that I'm like, oh, I should probably pay attention to that. I'm going to highlight them. So, I actually had the ability, like, on my phone to, like, highlight 
the areas that I need to pay attention to, that I can go back and reflect when I'm in my zone focused on my work, that I need to go back and reflect on this. So that's number one. You have to read your book. <laughs> like, I don't, sis, sir, I get it. Like, who has time? Like, I'm going to be right here in this bed, like, reading this, and I might fall asleep. The next thing I wake up, it's like 2 o'clock in the morning. I'm like, shit, I done fell asleep reading. <laughs> like, okay. So then I'm like, all right, let me get up a little bit and read a little bit more. So, yeah, that's me. Like, I had to read. For you to get the content, you got to read it. Like, there is no cheating in this class. I'm honest to God. Like, and you know, I will let you know. Like, you know, I'm raw. <laughs> I will let you know. I will literally let you know if there is a way to kind of sort of like cheat through, <laughs> but you can't. So like this is an example here, funny, the respiratory system and we're dealing with coronavirus. So like I literally would go through, uh, it's not going to show you, but <laughs> I would go through and highlight like portions and stuff that I need to like know like okay remember at the beginning of the patho books um it's gonna tell you like the regular physiology of it so that's good for review go ahead and review that but don't spend all of your time on the regular on the physiology portion of it don't do that like don't because you're not gonna be tested on it <laughs> that's where you get messed up you're like okay i gotta remember how the body works like, uh, no they're not gonna they don't give a shit like <laughs> you're taking pathophysiology they're not about to ask you uh what is the normal breathing process like no they're gonna be like they may be like okay this patient is experiencing dyspnea on assessment you're noticing that they're using what muscles in adults so which is abnormal which would be your abdominal muscles so you're gonna see your patient breathing with their stomach that's not normal so you're gonna remember that pay attention to that type of stuff so next when i'm in lecture let me just tell you how god works or whoever you praise this pandemic <laughs> with us being e-learning and virtual learning and stuff like it's low-key has helped me <laughs> so with class like i printed the powerpoints every chapter that we had to do that she lectured about i printed the powerpoints this is my big ass binder of all of my patho powerpoints like this is gonna be my Bible. This is gonna be my Bible, low key. Ooh. <laughs> this is gonna be my Bible, low key. So, like, I literally will break it up by units. Well, first of all, I have my like calendar in the front here of like our course calendar and what everything we're gonna be doing for the course because that's key too. Like, I need to be knowing what I'm walking my what I'm walking into that week so I would like break it up into like this unit what chapters are in it and I have my tabbies and I have them um broken up so I can know like chapter one da, 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 da. I may go back and reorganize and um relabel them by systems instead but like when I organized it for a class, I just did like by chapter so I can know like on this test This is what I need to be reviewing. We're going through chapter blah blah blah, blah for this test. So that's what I did and with lecture I That's how I took my notes like when she's talking When she is talking I'm writing down hella notes like No, no cap <laughs> I'm writing down notes exactly on the PowerPoint. So when I'm going back through my lectures, the recorded lectures, I'm like, oh yeah, she talked about this. Like you need to pay attention to this. Or when I'm going through my PowerPoints, I obviously know that she talked about this and like she put emphasis on this. So I need to go ahead and I need to study that information. So that's tip number two, print your PowerPoints when for your note taking write notes on the powerpoint i print printed mines uh both sided and i had two slides per page so i mean you really don't need to do like one slide per page because for one i mean you can sure why not but like 
to save space like in a binder wise and like this is probably the biggest binder and that was cool for me two slides per page I can write on top bottom blah blah, blah. I had enough room to write everything I'm cool so the next um tip I would do is for note taking and like taking in the concept would to be get an art book a sketchbook or whatever you want to call it so I use this for concept mapping you're gonna learn that in patho that a part of your like assignments you're gonna be creating concept maps which include like okay the disease what are the risk factors what complications are you gonna um, notice any clinical manifestations or signs and symptoms what tests you're gonna order how it affects the body like bodily fluids and all of that so for me like to thoroughly know like the disease and everything I wanted to get like an art book so I can create it myself so here's an example like the electrolyte imbalances like calcium so I would go ahead and put calcium okay so what am I gonna think of I'm gonna think of the heart I'm gonna think of the bone when I think of calcium what is hypercalcemia what is hypocalcemia i'm going to write down the differences with both of them what you're going to see the clinical manifestations clinical manifestations the treatments um yeah and lab values the, oh, lab values for sure it's being a hater right now <laughs> lab values for sure you're gonna have to memorize that too for like your electrolyte imbalances and then also what i did for like the respiratory system, even if, okay, so like the anatomy is kind of key. So I went ahead and printed this from our PowerPoint, which is gonna label all the points of like the upper and lower respiratory tracts. I wrote down like what was in the upper, the lower, um, what happens with the gas exchanges, all of that, like pictures too, like the cycle of breathing. And I wrote down everything that occurs on the side. So, that's going to be helpful for you. And so I would definitely highly suggest you doing that. That's another form of studying is for if you're a learner like that. Like I got to write stuff down and look at it for me to take it in. So a concept map book that I have for pathophysiology. That's another thing that you can do for studying. Tip number three. So... Studying wise, review that every day. Like you can, you're gonna have to take this information every day. Like it's, I gave myself like a day of not opening a book, reviewing a PowerPoint, or any of like anything that had to do with school. That was usually like my Friday because after my work week, I'm done. So on Fridays, I wouldn't open nothing. You're gonna need to definitely give yourself like a self care day and not do that at all. You're no, <laughs> no, because it's it's overwhelming. Like, I get it. So, yeah, um, testing. So, tips with testing I was a B average on my tests, like, I usually ranged my lowest test grade I got was an 83, which is a C in my um school. But whatever, like, <laughs> I, I didn't even care. It was like the last test, like, I did not care at all. I didn't care at all. So, um, with testing, with the pandemic, thank God that we are able to have, like, virtual learning. The lectures are recorded. So, I went back my Saturdays and my Sundays. I would review the lecture like before Saturday, Sunday, Monday, before I had class on Tuesday, Thursday. I would review the lectures that our our tests are gonna be on. And I would just sit here and go through with my PowerPoints. I would go ahead and look at the PowerPoint as I'm going through the lecture and I'll write down any things that I missed. I'm like, oh shit, you know, I didn't pay attention to that, which happens. And I know when I get back into the classroom, I'm still going to want to reflect on my lecture of like hearing it again and going through again. So I've already looked into like on Amazon to have like recorders or whatever and it's cheap. 
like twenty, thirty dollars or whatever. So of course I'm gonna ask my professor my professor for permission, but I can't imagine him saying no that I can't record. You know what I'm saying? So um that's another tip that we can do when we get back into the classroom is that we can sit here and record our lectures on a recorder. So that's dope. Um so yeah Basically, with testing, review your lectures, review your PowerPoints, review your concept maps. You got to look at this information every day in order to take it in. That's just really what it is. It's straightforward with this class. Um, that's just what I did. I ended the class with an 86%, and I don't care. I'll take it. Like, people struggle. Like, people were struggling through this class, so I'm just grateful. <laughs> and I have a cousin who's a nurse as well so like my support system is amazing through school like if i'm not getting something i'll be like am i stupid <laughs> am i stupid like why am i not getting this so yeah y'all that's like my little wrap up my tips for you for pathophysiology i like the class it was very interesting for me so i work in a doctor's office and now it all comes together like why the doctor is ordering this lab why he's ordering this test and like oh that's what's going on when they're experiencing this like it all makes sense to me now um and that's helped me actually improve on my own job so i love pathophysiology i'm not gonna lie weird it stressed me the hell out like i was stressed like taking stuff taking my stress out on my loved ones and like now i'm happy like <laughs> it's definitely been a change in me but yeah, like it's really a good class, y'all. If you remember to that you need to study the abnormal abnormalities of the disease or abnormalities of the body process, you'll get it. You'll get the class. Know what you're studying, not the normal. <laughs> not the normal. Get that through your head, not the normal. Cuz that's going to save you cuz you may not realize that. It was a couple of girls that didn't realize that until two tests in. Like, no, we don't look at that. That does not matter. It does not matter. So, yes review your powerpoints read your book while you're at work skim a little bit highlight a little bit you know you got to take the information in i mean there's nights that you know we're up late and we got to get up early but you know it's all gonna be worth it in the end so yeah um if you guys have any questions or anything feel free to t text me <laughs> feel free to comment like I have an email in my bio as well like you can email me like I don't care like I'm here we're gonna get through this um let me know if you guys are interested in me like uploading any of my like concept maps and stuff like that like all of my information for you guys like I can do that I can send you guys pdfs like I got y'all so yeah oh um I got y'all so yeah that was that. That's how you are going to pass your pathophysiology class with an A or a B. It's going to be a breeze. You're going to breeze through your semester. If you have any questions, you know, guys ask me what kind of videos more do you want? Like what kind of content do you guys want me to cover uh, with nursing school? I'm here for you. Um, yeah, so thumbs up this video if this was helpful. We're going to get this patho out because people need this information because it really helps me. <laughs> it really, it really, this is really what got me through. So yeah, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see y'all in my next video.